the cinema snob. And if you're like me, what's the first thing you think of when you think of Halloween? That's right, leprechauns. Most of you would connect this famous icon to St. Patrick's Day. Well, that's because most of you are sheep. Halloween is the holiday to be associated with this mythical creature. Don't believe me? Then just check out Leprechaun. Finally, somebody sees these creepy bastards for the little demon fucks that they are. This movie realizes that four-foot men in green hats, pointy shoes, and high-pitched voices are the epitome of fear. And we're gonna review this little masterpiece right here today. Uh, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? I'm the cinema snob. I'm the cinema snob. No, I'm the cinema snob. No, I'm the cinema snob. <sighs> <sighs> Well, okay, what do you say we review this anus turkey together? I would like that. <laughs> so it starts out with Warwick Davis as the leprechaun, looking about as scary as a midget Lady Gaga. Try as they will, and try as they might, who steals me gold. Won't live through the night. Seriously, this movie is so unbelievably not scary that it just deepens my voice. Deeper. And deeper. Deeper. And deeper. <coughs> God damn it, I'm sick of this shit! How the hell you do that voice? Years of drinking Crystal Pepsi, my friend. Alright, so as the credits roll, we see a guy named Dan O'Grady comes home from Ireland to North Dakota. Must have been that big Ireland to North Dakota rush. However, he manages to bring a bag of gold with him. Pot of gold! A wee person, a leprechaun! I caught him and made him show me where his gold is! You know, I'm surprised they're still showing the credits. After that line, I assume everybody would just want their name taken off. <laughs> Faster than you can say, Bikora! The leprechaun appears out of the suitcase and attacks the old lady. I want me gold now! Oh, oh come on, he didn't kill her? She's just a fucking clod! Your wife makes a fine pot of tea, Danny me boy. But luckily, Danny boy has Irish kryptonite, or in this case, a four leaf clover, which I suppose weakens him. I'll give you more than gold! Ah. Your bullets won't stop me forever. I'll keep coming back! Well, wait a minute, what did we miss? Bullets can't hurt him, but then he suddenly passed out? In fact, why was there even an edit there? They just dissolved to the exact same scene. Horror of this clover will keep you in there forever. So O'Grady nails the little guy in a box, and trust me, that's not as exciting as it sounds. But before he can light the fucker on fire, I guess he has a heart attack or something. <laughs> Wait a minute, if that happened to him, whatever happened to the box? No, oh, it's okay. He's being looked after by top men. Who? Top men. Cut to a mere ten years later as we see one of the main characters played by... Jennifer Aniston? She's in this movie? Yep, Jennifer Aniston's old career is pretty much like David Schwimmer's current career. Alright, just keep the French jokes to a minimum. I make no promises. It turns out Aniston and her father, Randy Travis here, are staying in North Dakota for a while. And of course, they're staying in the old house where Darby O'Gill's gangbanger is. How about I get a hotel somewhere in town, and you can come visit? Okay, I'll pay for it. Honey, you really think? Money's all you need to get by in this life? Well, well she, she is, is Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston. So she runs into one of the house painters, played by Jim Carrey Bacon here, as he's part of a painting company called Three Guys That Paint. You'll never guess what they do. Paint? No, make obnoxious comedy relief. Boy, I can go for a beer right now. You're too little to drink. Don't you ever, ever drink that stuff. Hey, Ozzy, what's this? I uh, gotcha. Uh, let go. Please tell me they die. I'll pray for us both. 
So that little twerp who I swear is the long-haired version of Ness is named Alex, who you might remember from Mr. Nanny. And don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Never saw it. Good. And that big tub of idiot who's dressed like a race car bed, he's named Ozzy, played by Mark Holton. Francis. So we see Jennifer Aniston go downstairs to give Jim Carrey bacon some juice. I just thought we were shouting animals. No, only I may do that. Oh, okay. So after Anison heads back up, Ozzy heads back down, swearing he heard something. He accidentally knocks the four-leaf clover over, which gives the leprechaun back his powers. Hey, Tubby, you got a light for an old leprechaun's pipe? Well, it's about as good as most Irish cooking. I need me gold! So Ozzy tells them all about the leprechaun, but of course, nobody believes him. Hey, hey, look up in the sky! So what, Ozzy? It's just a rainbow. It's a magic rainbow. Jack, can it make this movie good? No, no, no. They said it's a magic rainbow, not a miracle rainbow. So they follow the rainbow to where O'Grady hit the gold when Blimpox here actually swallows one of the coins. My guess is he thought there was chocolate inside. Do you know what this means? We can get you an operation. For what? To make you smart. See, we can go to the hospital and have them operate and fix your brain. What is this, Clovers for Algernon? No operation can make you smart. Hell, if it could, the producers of this movie will have gotten it ages ago. Meanwhile, Aniston tries to help paint the house while the leprechaun tries topping off her morning. Nathan, come on, what are you doing? I'm back! <laughs> so the leprechaun attacks both Aniston and her father as they try to get them to the hospital. Hey, is it me, or do you totally want to see a sitcom called Three Guys That Paint? Yeah, I could actually see that happening. Coming this fall to CBS. One's a good-looking painter, one's a bumbling doofus, and the other is the boy with the heart of gold. Top it all off with a psychotic killing leprechaun, and you have the hit family sitcom of the year, Three Guys That Paint. Coming this fall on CBS. Welcome home. So as they head to the hospital, the leprechaun finds a mode of transportation to follow them. <laughs> That's right, folks. This is what's gonna try and scare you throughout the majority of the film. A little guy on a tricycle. Hey, at least it's more dignified than playing an Ewok. So they take one of the coins to an expert who tells them that the gold is real. He keeps the coin overnight to analyze it some more when he senses something wicked this way comes. Wicked or wicked? Does it matter? Oh, don't act like you can build up suspense movie. You're called Leprechaun! And here we finally see what this pot of shit looks like. Really? That's the scary makeup he's been given? That's not the least bit frightening! I know, he was more intimidating in that kid's film, A Very Unlucky Leprechaun. In fact, he's actually scarier looking in that film. You're right, he actually looks more scary in the children's film than he does in the horror film. In fact, did we get the right version? So he kills off the store owner by, get a load of this, a fucking pogo stick. Really? That's the leprechaun's weapon of choice? Hey, don't laugh. My father went the same way. No! On your pogo stick, your pogo stick, your pogo stick. Hop on your pogo stick and hop right through the day. So the leprechaun decides it's time for an upgrade. He goes from a small childish tricycle to a small childish Barbie car. Nothing but the finest for this dignified character. This may end up killing me, but I just gotta know. Why don't you take that ridiculous mask off and step out of the car? It's not nice to make fun of a leprechaun. Is that so? So now you're a leprechaun, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Next you're gonna tell me you're gonna end up in space or in the hood. 
So the leprechaun attacks the cop as he runs away to try and hide. I don't blame him. I don't think I can face the world knowing I was beat up by a melting willow. Over here. I'm over here. Old Tom Bombadil is a merry fellow. Bright blue is his jacket and his boots are yellow. Oh, he throws a stick at it? Is that really what they teach these guys when they come across a supernatural being? Throw a stick at it? Sarge, Sarge, I got a question. What is it, Callahan? What if, this is totally hypothetical, what if I was attacked by a psychotic killer leprechaun that was trying to kill me? Yeah, I don't know. Throw your stick at it. Throw my stick at it, right. What if it's the Easter Bunny? Get out of here! Please, don't let me die while I'm next to your crotch. He snaps his neck? Really? I don't know why. I guess I thought he would come up with a more imaginative way of killing this guy. Well, they had to keep it somewhat realistic. Now where's the cock of gold? So he goes back to the house looking for his goal as he comes across a cereal called Lucky Clovers. Now I can't imagine why the real Lucky Charms wouldn't want their bright and colorful image attached to this dark and gory horror film. Hoo-hoo! Well, if you need to know the answer, it's magically done. Thank you. No problem. So he goes into the closet, pulling out all the shoes in the house and shining them. Why? I guess he has a shoe fetish. The others return home to find the place in shambles. This is crazy. What the hell's going on here? Well, it could have been a bear. They sometimes come down from the hills looking for food. Yeah, bears are often known for eating food and shining shoes. So Jim Carrey Bacon goes out to inspect the place when he's caught in a bear trap that the leprechaun set up. This results in a pretty embarrassing fight scene. Jesus, this choreography is making Dolomite look good. And now, obvious dumbass line in three, two, one. Nathan, that was no fucking bear. Do you give me your cap? Alex, be careful! Oh good, send the little boy out where the dangerous leprechaun is. Nothing but straight arrow ethics for these people. <laughs> oh yeah, he can appear in a safe, but he can't get through a car window. What is the extent of his lame-ass powers anyway? What the heck is he doing in there? It's Mario Kart, Dead Race 2000. Don't forget to hit pedestrians to get the golden coins. Oh, you a mean motherfucker. Oh, oh come, come on. on! What is the truck made out of styrofoam? My Hot Wheels don't flip over that easy. <laughs> Boy, that door must have sharp hinges. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together ooky, the Adams family. So Aniston finds out where the boys hid the gold as she goes out to return it to the leprechaun. Oh, you ever worked one of those things before? Nope. It's okay, just pretend like you're shooting Brad Pitt. Is that me gold? What the hell are you? I'm a leprechaun, me dear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess it is kind yeah. of a stupid question. So he counts his gold over and finds that one coin is still missing. That's the piece that Ozzy has in his stomach. They've got me coin. No one takes a leprechaun's gold. I don't even get it. What's he gonna do with the gold? It's not like he could just walk into a place and buy a yacht. Uh, he'll eBay it. What, with gold? He'll cash it in. What, dress like that? He'll get a disguise. What kind of disguise? Just shut up, okay? Alex, you gotta get some ice for Ozzy's ear. It boils up some water. I'll cover you. What? Zool, Bigora, Zool! So he attacks them some more as they try to call for help. Hello, hello, help us please. Come help us, we're trapped inside of here. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? You do? Well, you better let the poor guy out! 
They figure out the only person who can stop him is Dan O'Grady, the guy from the beginning, who apparently is in an old folks home down the street. But how are they gonna get away from Rumpel shit skin? Get this, they just throw shoes at him to shine. Oh, oh. He really has to shine every shoe that he sees? What's wrong with this guy? He has OLD, obsessive leprechaun disorder. They get to the hospital only to discover, what a shock, the leprechaun is there waiting for him. She tries to get away, but oh no, the leprechaun has a wheelchair. So she comes across the O'Grady guy in the elevator, or rather, on the elevator, as he tells her how to defeat him. Four-leaf clover. Freshly plucked from the clover patch. Beside the well. You gotta put it on his body. You have to touch him. And then you can kill him. So what you're saying is, I have to look over a four-leaf clover that I overlooked before. So of course she comes across a bunch of clovers as she tries to find one with four leaves. <laughs> Little girls shouldn't look for four leaf clovers. Is that a saying now? <laughs> I just don't get how we're supposed to find this guy scary. Oh, it can work. Just imagine him as a child molester. That'll make him look a little spooky. <laughs> Her friends knock him out as they finally find a four-leaf clover in the field, and it even glows. I'm surprised they didn't find that earlier. But the leprechaun attacks Ozzy, trying to get his final coin. Fortunately, the little boy pops up, saying probably the most epic line in this movie. Fuck you, Lucky Charms. <laughs> Oh, that was cosmic. Yeah, didn't think you'd hear a line that awesome in this movie, did you? But you did, and it's a masterpiece of writing. Fuck you, Lucky Charms. Seriously, that shit is worthy of Schwarzenegger. Hasta la vista, baby. Though this does raise the question, how the hell would he even know what Lucky Charms is if they have Lucky Clovers in this world? Because when you think about it, it doesn't really make sense with the... I really shouldn't be questioning this, should I? No, you should not. It's still cosmic. So just when you think it's dead, the fucking little green goblin refuses to die. This looks like a job for a slug in the face. Jesus, that was one unstable leprechaun! I guess their blood is made out of fucking nitroglycerin! So the leprechaun is destroyed, the people are safe, and they never have to fear about seeing him again. That is, until the cum-guzzling whore known as the Hollywood sequel takes over and pimps it out like a brothel. So that was Leprechaun. I didn't like it. No, me neither. I mean, do we really have to go into great detail why this movie is bad? The plot's ridiculous, the characters are morons, and it's a fucking leprechaun! I don't know why they thought a little green man would be frightening, but he's not. He's simply not. The whole plot for this movie sounds like a Will Ferrell scenario. Nothing about it sounds like a legit horror movie. It's just magically despicable. And that's all for Nostalgia Weed. Thanks for watching, and thanks for joining me, Cinema Snob. No, thank you for... No, this was a giant waste of time. Dickhole. You're a dickhole! I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. <laughs> you're still a dickhole. You're a dickhole! No, you're a dickhole! You're a dickhole! Dickhole! Dick! Fuck you, 
Lucky Charms.